Well, praise the Lord, everybody. <clears throat> Look, I want to give a happy Mother's Day shout out to everybody uh, watching this. To all of our mothers, we want to give you time to come on in and go ahead and invite a friend um, and welcome them in um, into the arena of praise. Look, we are excited about the Word of God on this morning. So come on in and be blessed because God has a word for your lives on this morning. So once again, happy uh, Mother's Day to all of our mothers. I'm excited that you can come on and share with us. Look, God has a word for you uh, on this morning and I am very ecstatic this morning because I'm refreshed um, about the word that God is getting ready to release into your life. Um, so mothers, I want you to invite <clears throat> some more mothers into this broadcast and invite them in and let them know there's a word for the Lord to have some certain <clears throat> principles and instructions for our mothers to help you continue living the life that God has called you to live out. So come on in. We get ready to get started in just a few moments momentarily, but I want you to begin to meditate on the word of God and begin to uh, see what God is getting ready to do. watching from the ring of praise. Y'all let me know where you're watching from this morning. Amen. <clears throat> I'm excited about this word once again. I'm sorry I keep reiterating, but y'all yeah, been with the Lord recently. I've been with the, I've been I've been with the Lord, seeking the face of the Lord, what he has to say to us in this time. And I believe God is gonna say something very prophetically to you all on today. Heading in a new well, at 10 o'clock, we're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. Once again, happy Mother's Day. Uh, to all of our mothers, our single mothers, our married mothers, uh, our mothers who are trying to find a man, can't get a man. God bless you. Welcome. Welcome. Come on in. Come on in. <laughs> Amen. As you can see, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Uh, I see all of our mothers coming on in. Ms. Linda Barber, Ms. Lita, our future mothers. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on in. We get ready to pray and saturate the atmosphere from the Word of God uh, on this morning. So I want you to pray your hearts and your minds to receive. We're going to be in Deuteronomy, the first chapter, uh, verses 6 through 8, and then we're going to hop on over to Deuteronomy, uh, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Amen. A ring of praise. Thank y'all for uh, being online. <clears throat> Amen. It's definitely a blessing uh, to see you all. Thank God we're not six feet under, but we still have breath in our bodies. It's 10 o'clock here to follow Lord. We tell you, thank you, God, today for your goodness and your mercy. God, we thank you, God, for your love and your kindness. God, we thank you for another opportunity, God, to dive into your word. Lord, we ask you, God, to send your word afresh. God, send your anointing, God, that makes preaching and teaching easy. God, we thank you, God, for a revelatory word in this season. God, we thank you, God, for a word, Lord, that would challenge our faith, God, to be better, to strengthen our faith in you. God, we thank you, Lord, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of your mouth. So, God, we ask you, God, to speak today in this intimate moment, in this intimate setting, God, in this 10 a.m. service. God, we need a word from you, God. We need direction. We need clarity on what you're communicating to the church. Lord, we need direction and clarity, God, on what you're communicating to our individual lives. And, God, we tell you, thank you, Lord, that it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Look, <clears throat> we're going to go ahead and hop into this word. Deuteronomy uh, chapter 1, uh, verses 6 through 8, and then Deuteronomy the second chapter, verses 1 through 7. The word of the Lord declares, <clears throat> The Lord our God spoke to us at Horeb, saying, You have stayed long enough at this mountain. You have stayed long enough enough at this mountain. Turn and sit on your journey and go to the hill of the Amorites. And then we go to verse 8. See, I have placed the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land which the Lord swore to give to your fathers, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob and to the descendants after them. Deuteronomy chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. Talking about wandering in the wilderness. Verse 
1 says, Then we turned and set out for the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord spoke to me, and we circled Mount Seir for many days. And the Lord spoke to me saying, You have circled this mountain long enough. You have circled this mountain long enough. Now turn north. And command the people, saying, You are going to pass through the territory of your brothers and sons of Esau who live in Seir. They will be afraid of you, so be very careful. Verse 7 declares, For the Lord your God has blessed you in all that you have done. He has known your wandering through this great wilderness. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. You have not lacked anything. For today's sermon presentation on this morning, I want to talk from the subject heading in a new direction, heading in a new direction. <clears throat> For those who do not know, I've been privileged to have the opportunity to obtain my CDL license, which means it's my commercial driver's license. And when I first got my driver's license, I ended up starting my trucking company called Potter's World Trucking. I went on and started driving for about three or four months to generate income for our church, for our ministry, the Arena Praise. So most of the time, I would go uh, through South Carolina, North Carolina to pick up Lowe's, and I would have to come back through Atlanta, Atlanta, Georgia. And because Atlanta, Georgia is close to Chattanooga, Tennessee, only an hour and a half away, I drew the conclusion that I did not need my GPS when I got to Atlanta, Georgia. So there's a certain route that I took to get back home to Chattanooga, Tennessee. So I assumed that I knew the right direction. So as I turned off my trucker's GPS, you know, me and my 18 wheeler, yes, 18 wheeler, I had my tractor and the trailer on the back of it, driving, confident that I'm getting ready to get back home. So I thought I knew where I was going, but there were certain parts of Atlanta, Georgia, well, I was kind of like, uh, I'm not sure, but I think I'm going to do it because I'm a man. I don't need no GPS. I don't need to do all this, you know, GPS navigational system stuff. So as I was driving, all right, I ended up passing by the exit to get to Chattanooga, Tennessee. Here I am looking for the Chattanooga North 75 exit, but all of a sudden they had changed the routes. They had changed the way to get to Chattanooga. So instead of getting off the exit, I had a detour. I had a delay because I wanted to do it my way. So I ended up having to drive three, four, five miles down the road and have to turn around. And for those who do not know, an 18 wheeler is just not like a car. You just can't turn around and do whatever you want to. But there are certain routes that you must do and go to in order to get back on the right path. So instead of going the easy way, I had to go down a little bit further to turn around. So, being naive that I am, I turned back around, got back on the interstate, and I missed the exit again. All because I did not turn on my GPS. So, here I am in Atlanta, Georgia, going in circles, going around the same route. And if there was somebody in the same vicinity and be like, is that part of the truck? I thought they were supposed to get off this exit a long time ago. So I did not use my GPS, and a GPS, it means a global positioning system. It gives you directions. It gives you a step-by-step -step directions on where you are supposed to go. It puts in your origin and the destination. So, so I thought I knew where I was going, watch this, and because I did not follow directions, Everything else in my life for that day was thrown off. Everything was jacked up. My, my delivery time was uh, delayed by 30 minutes to an hour, all because I did not decide to follow the directions. So, so what you have to understand, people, God, is that that's just like some of us, that God has given us directions. He's told us what to do. He's told us who to go to, when to go to them, where to go, where to apply, where to do this, where to do that. And many of us, we have neglected the plans and directions of God, and it has caused a delay in our lives. It has caused us to be behind schedule, all because we decided to do it our way. So God, he has given us directions. He has told and instructed us to live 
holy. He has told us and instructed us to live right. And many of us, we put in our intellectual capacities that I'm going to go in my own direction. And there comes a point, people of God, in our lives where we have to come to the realization that I'm heading in the wrong direction. Let me say that one more time. If you are ready to grow, if you're ready to mature and really live the life God intended us to have, there comes a point of reality and realization where you say I'm heading in the wrong direction. So in order to head in the right direction, you must head in what? A new direction. In order for Pastor Ricky to get back to Chattanooga, I could no longer go in the same direction that I was going. But I had to do what? Go in a new direction. Because the reality is, if I continue to go in circles, if I continue to go in the same direction, same cycle, same circles, I would have still been in the same place. Now, as we began to engage in our text this morning in Deuteronomy, we have a certain group of people called the Israelites in Deuteronomy who modeled after me. They received a prophetic word. They, they received sound instructions from the Lord, but they continue to go in circles for 40 long years. So, what you have to understand, people of God, is that uh, Deuteronomy it opens with a new generation. They are, the Israelites, they are standing, here it is, at the edge of the promised land. They are standing at the precipice of the promised land. They are on the verge of a breakthrough on getting to the promised land. Now, 40 years before their parents have received the law of God. And, and the law of God, it is it was the the, uh, the the commandments that God had issued to them in this time. They were the detailed instructions and directions on what they were supposed to do. So they have these commandments. They have these instructions from the Lord. And, and they were to enter the land shortly thereafter. But the Bible tells us that they rebelled and refused the word of the Lord meaning that they rejected the, the commandments and instructions because they wanted to do what they wanted to do. Now, uh, because of their disobedience, this led to the Lord's decree that all adults in this particular generation would die in the wilderness for failing to trust and believe in him. In other words, the, the Lord, he decreed that, that all the adults in this generation would die for failing to respond in obedience. And I began to wonder, people of God, that how many of us are dying spiritually? Because we have neglected to take heed on what the Lord has called us to do. How many of us are dying spiritually because God told us to do something, but instead of responding immediately to what the Lord has told us to do, we decided to do what we wanted to do. But And the truth of the matter is, is I, I don't care how successful you may be in your endeavors, in, in your business, in your personal lives. I, I don't care how much money you got saved up in the bank. I don't care how many degrees you have behind your name. But if your soul is dying, if your soul is on the verge of dying, then you're really not living. You're just existing. So I want you to understand that in this season of your life, in order for you to head in a new direction, your soul has to be alive in God. I'm getting ready to preach. Y'all just give me some time now. So, so, so the children of Israel, I, I know, I know it's Mother's Day. I'm getting ready to bless you. Just give me some time, mothers. I'm coming down your road. So the children of, of, of the Exodus generation, the Israelites, they are in need to hear a, a, a fresh word from the Lord. <laughs> Uh, because they need to know uh, the expectations of what God had told them to do as they prepared to lay hold of the inheritance that God had promised them. So as we begin to look at Deuteronomy, the first chapter, uh, the Lord, he speaks to Israel. He speaks to the Israelites at heart. He commands them to go to the land that I promised. 
Israelites of, of Herod of Horeb at this time. I need you to go to the land that I promise you uh, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and their future descendants uh, because I, I have set the land up before you. Uh, but what you have to understand is that although the Lord uh, has set the land up before them, uh, Israel still had to take possession of it. Uh, and they did not take possession of the land uh, because they were wandering in the wilderness. They received a word from the Lord, but they wanted to wander. They wanted to wander in the wilderness. Pastor, what does it mean to wander in the wilderness? Whenever you wander in the wilderness, it means that you begin roaming around. And what you have to understand is that the Israelites said, they are roaming around the wilderness. They began moving from place to place. However, they didn't have a fixed and set out plan. They, they, they began wondering. They, they began to stay stuck in the same place. They kept getting the same results month after month, year after year, day after day. They, they, they still began getting and receiving the same news day after day, week after week, year after year, all because they decided to wonder in the wilderness. So if I may propose a question for you on this morning, how long does it take <clears throat> for you to recognize that it's not all about you and your plans, but it's all about God's plans for your life? Let me say it again. How long does it have to get into your cognitive thinking that it's not about you and your plans, but it's about God's plans for your life? Jeremiah 29, 11, you know what it says in the NIV version, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, plans not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. And the truth of the matter is, is when you abort the plan of God, uh, you begin wandering in your own willingness. Uh, now you're wondering why this ain't working up, uh, why this ain't working out, why is this not adding up? And the reason is, it's because you aborted the plan of God. I got another question. How long does it take for you to understand uh, that if you try to continue forcing things to happen and do it your way. It just won't work unless the hand of God is on it. So you got to understand if God hasn't been incorporated with all your decisions, with all your ways, baby, then it just won't work. How long does it take for you to recognize that you've been heading in the wrong Direction. You've been getting the signs. You you've been getting the clues. You've been getting the hints. But but you still wanted to do it your way. You you've been getting the same answers uh, year after year. Why why hasn't anything changed in my life? Why hasn't the thing that I've been praying for hasn't manifested in my life? Uh, why has it come to fruition yet? Maybe because you've been heading in the wrong direction. So God he. He tells them, I need you to march into the promised land and possess it. And there have been 38 years that have passed by and the Israelites, they were ready to enter to the promised land. And they began entering to Canaan in the 40th, 40th year. So the Bible says, now I'm getting ready to get into my text. That was all, all pre-stuff, okay? I'm getting ready to give you Bible now, okay? Deuteronomy 1 and 6, the Lord our God spoke to us at horror saying, <clears throat> you have stayed at this mountain <clears throat> long enough. You have stayed long enough at this mountain. So your next set of instructions in verse 7, turn and sit on your journey. <clears throat> I, I think y'all missed a shout. I need somebody to give me some hearts or likes or something. Oh, Pastor, you talking about nothing. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Let me say it again. Uh, the Lord is speaking to the Israelites. You have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn and set on your journey. So they are going in circles for years, same old cycles for years, and, and nothing has been changed. So when I look at that word, turn, I... I think of the word of repentance, that, that, that whenever you're really serious about turning and, and changing and ready for the newness of God and ready for God to do something new in your life, you, you have to have a sense of repentance. 
whenever you repent, it needs to turn. And the reality is, is that many of us been repeating and not repenting. Let me say that one more time. Many of us, we have been repeating just like the Israelites. They have been repeating the same old cycles year after year, going through the same old emotional struggles year after year. But, 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 but the Lord says, I need you to turn. And, and when you turn, I need you to set out on your journey. So what you have to understand, people, God, is that God is saying today that I have so much in store for you. I got so much that I want to do in your life. I already got the plan mapped out for you and your family. I already got it figured out, but I just need you to turn. Y'all gonna get me excited this morning. You, you, you've been looking for the right word. Look, what do I do? I, I've been getting the same thing, the same results, and God is saying, I need you to turn. And the reason why, come on, let me go on and preach this morning. The, the, the reason why you need to really turn, people, God, is because the blessing is in the turn. See, 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 you've been looking uh, to do it your way. I'm, I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to do that. I'm going to try to do this. I'm going to try to figure it out on my own. But the blessing is in the turn. The, the, the deliverance that you've been believing God for, the deliverance is in the turn. All right? The, the, the provision that you need is in the turn. The help that you need is in the turn. Everything you need is in your obedience to turn. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to turn. You got to turn. That's what God has been looking for in this season, in, in this first, second Sunday of May. I need you to turn. All right, here we go. So, 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 so whatever you need is, is in what? The turn. You, you have to turn it and change it and make modifications and alterations in your life if you want to head in a new direction. All right. So people, God needs y'all to hear me. I'm getting ready to tell you what the Lord has spoken to me. All right. What you have to understand is that... <coughs> Time is running out, right? Time is running out. We've been playing church. We've been playing games in God, out of God. Sometimes I read my words. Sometimes I don't. Sometimes I'm up. Sometimes I'm down. All right? But in order to do what is best for you and your life, you have to turn. All right? So, so I need you to get in this spirit, people got, that, that I need you to turn and, and so, so what are the practices? What, what are the struggles in your life that need to expire, all right? What are the things that you've been doing that, that need to cease and perish in your life? What are, are, is the thing that, that the struggles in your life, we're talking about breaking generational curses, I'm getting ready to preach it. What are the things that, that, that you need to take the oxygen from? That you're still giving it life support. What are the things that have finally need to come dead in your life? What do you need to terminate in your life in order to head in a what? A new direction. So the Lord is speaking to the Israelites. You have stayed at this mountain, what? Long enough. Turn and set on your journey. All right? <clears throat> now, what, what, what I failed to mention is... Is that the Lord, he had, he had rebuked them for their disobedience, for not responding out of obedience, for not heeding to the voice of the Lord. Watch this. All right. So, 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 so to my mother's happy mother's day, the first principle that I like to present to all my mothers on you is that a mother is never afraid to rebuke their children. I'll say it again. A mother, all right, is never afraid to rebuke their children. Now, all right, so so mothers, we can look and model after God that when he saw his children getting out of alignment and, and being misdirected and going in cycles, so God stepped in and he rebuked them. He stopped them in their tracks and he got them in back into alignment. And to my mothers, whenever you see your children getting out of line, you got to put your foot down and say, no, 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 no. The devil is a liar. You will not do this. You will not come to my house and bring all this drama, all this mess in my house because I want you to head in a new direction. I cannot allow my child to continue to go in these cycles. So a good mother knows how to rebuke her, her children, all right? So the Lord spoke speaks to them saying, you have stayed long enough at this mountain. Turn and set your journey. Here it is. See, I have placed the land before you. So despite their disobedience, 
God still made provisions and set up the land. And to all my mothers out there, point number two, a good mother will still set up the best for her children. All right, let, 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 me, let me say it again. The, the, despite what they did, all right, if they disrespected you, if they were disobedient, if they still didn't listen after you told them a thousand times what to do, what not to do, a good mother will still set up the best for their children. A good mother will still make provisions for their children, for their children. Although they may be hard-headed, although they may be acting crazy, that's what a good mother is. So now, on today for our Mother's Day message, all right, we are taking the model out to God. God extends his mercy to the children of Israel. And mothers, that's what you have to do with your children. You have to be able to extend your, 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 your mercy uh, towards your children. Yes, they messed up. Yes, they made a mistake. Yes, they made bad grades. Yes, they tried to do it too fast. But a good mother extends grace and mercy to her children. <clears throat> and so, so a good mother, she, she, she still sets up her children, this is what I want to talk about, to be successful. So to all my mothers, I want you to pause parenthetically. How are you setting up your children to be successful? Yes, they may be grown. Yes, they may be little. But right now, I need you to start developing a plan. Just like God had set up a plan for the Israelites. What type of plan are you setting up for your children? Well, what type of things are you going to leave behind? What type of provision are you going to hand them down debt? Or are you going to hand them down deeds and property and wealth and money in the bank? Are you going to hand them down debt where they have to go to school and get into all this debt? Or are you going to be a wise steward over the blessings that God has bestowed in your care and save up a college fund? Look, I don't want to hear this real teaching. All right, to help them get through school. Your children shouldn't have to struggle all their lives. All right, but it takes a good, strong mother to set up their children to be successful. So, thank God. Let's take a praise break. Can we thank God for all of our mothers, all right, who have decided to set up their children to be successful? Let me go and get this message out the way. So, the Lord says, I have placed the land before you that children of Israel all the thing you have to do is walk into it. Woo. Mothers, all right, when you set up your children, they should be able to just walk into it and, and step into it with, with easiness just because you have already paved the way for them. All right, you struggle, but it doesn't mean your children have to struggle. And y'all, I got to break this spirit off the church and off our lives. That many of us, we feel that our children, well, I struggle. You got to struggle too. The devil is a liar. If you already been through the struggle, if you already uh, experienced all the heartache and the pain and, and the bad lessons and the lessons that you learned in the midst of what you were going through, your children should have to go through the same thing you have to go through. Preach, Pastor. Y'all don't, don't Somebody say amen. All right? All right. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm taking too long. I got to go and get this message out the way. But I'm feeling my help. I have placed the land before you. Go in and take possession of the land, which the Lord swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and their descendants. All right? So, 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 and, and God is saying that for some of us, all right, you, you've been working too hard. All right, for us, even in our life, for those of us connected to the household of faith, for those of us who has a keen relationship with Jesus, we've been working too hard. God has already made the provisions for us. He's already paved the way for us. The only thing we got to do is step into it. All right, so, so that's why we have to get self out the way. That's why we have to get our will out the way and learn. If I don't teach y'all nothing else, y'all need to learn from Pastor Ricky. Your, in your prayer time, you should say, Lord, let your will be done. All right, every time you pray, Lord, not my will, but Lord, let your will be done. Because I understand when I put my will in front of your will, it will always come into chaos. It will always lead me in the wrong direction. But in order for us to head in a new direction, God wants us to do it his way and through his will. So he tells us, <coughs> go in and take possession of the land. But they still didn't get it because they wanted to wander in the wilderness. How long are you going to stay in the wilderness? So here we go in verse chapter 2. This is where I want to talk about, all right? We in chapter 2 now. The Israelites are receiving instructions from the Lord. 
They disobeyed. God got it right. He had to kill a few folks. All right, for the lack of disobedience, he rebuked them. All right, they finally get back on track a little bit. Then they still didn't get it. All right, in verse 1, chapter 2, then we turn and set out for the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. As the Lord spoke to me, and we circled Mount Seir for many days. All right? And the Lord spoke to me saying, you have circled. There go my word. I'm in the text. All right? You have circled from the NASB version. You have circled this mountain long enough. Now turn north. I want. To, I, want I really want that to penetrate your spirit this, this morning. For those who will come back and watch this. All right? You have circled this mountain. Long enough. Now turn north. Now, here we go. We're in a series entitled Breaking Generational Curses. And the curse, all right, means the struggle in your family or in your bloodline. That is the struggle that I'm referencing. All right? So so we're, we're trying to break generational curses. Now, check this out. I want y'all to really think um, practical of the text. Now, after 18 years, all right, they in the wilderness for 40. After 18 years, now we got grown folk. All right, we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt. 18 years, struggling, wandering, all right, roaming around for 18 years. Now we got folk who grown and start having children. Watch this. Don't miss it. So the people who began to produce children, now, watch, don't miss it, they are passing down that way of thinking to their children. So now when an individual who is 18 now turns 30, watch it, now their children are 12 years old. And if you don't remember, recall we did a series on shifting the paradigm being like a year or two ago. And, and most children receive their, their practices, their habits when they're young and 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 years old. They, they, they receive that download. So the Israelites, they have created, all right, these new practices, and, and they now have what a new culture, all right, that, that the young children have now prescribed to it. So now this way of thinking has, has transferred from generation to generation. Now the mothers and the fathers, they have passed it down to the children. So to all my mothers out there, what are you passing down to your children? Are they taking off from you your bad attitude? Are they taking bad addictions from you? What are you passing down? Because the reality is, the reason why a lot of people smoke, a lot of children smoke, is because they've seen their parents smoke. The reason why a lot of children uh, get involved in fornication and start sleeping around is because their mama was bringing men over oh, and calling them uncle. Y'all don't want no real teaching. What are you passing down? What is the generational thing? What is the generational struggle that you're passing down? All right, if you're talking about, you know, they'll never be nothing, then they're going to tell their children they'll never be nothing. So, so what are you really passing down? All right, we should be passing down good character, having a good attitude, loving yourself, self-respect. What are you really passing down to your children? So now, what, mothers, I really want y'all to really think right now. All right, for real, for real. Look at your children's life right now. What traits, what characteristics have they adopted from you, good or bad? All right, and, and, and if they are bad, I want you to repent and say, Lord, I'm sorry, I was the one. All right, well, so, and if they're good, God bless you. All right, but, but I want you to think of the cycle that the children of Israel have going for 40 years and nobody decided to break the curse and the struggle over their lives. And, and, and the intention and the purpose of this preaching, this series, is to alter the trajectory of your mind. All right? That it's your mind that, that has to change. All right? Romans 12, 2. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it starts and originates in the root of our mind. So that's the purpose of y'all watching me right now. I'm trying to get you to change your mind about what you used to do, what you passed down to your generation. And to our future mothers out there, you have to be cognizant of the fact, what are you going to be passing down to your children, all right? So they, they, they have circled this mountain 
All right? But in order for the children of Israel, <coughs> watch this, <coughs> to step into the promised land, they eventually had to break up some stuff. All right? They, 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 they eventually, here it is, had to break up the routine and the cycle. And, and, and once again, I'm here today to encourage somebody, all right, that that that, that we have to first break, have a breakthrough in our minds. Because uh, if you haven't had a breakthrough in your minds, you've been holding everybody else back. You've been holding your family back. You've been holding your children back. You've been holding your friends back because you haven't experienced complete deliverance in your mind. So you've been holding everybody back. So you have to break up the routine. You got to change up the routine. You have to break up the schedule. You have to break up the cycle in the name of Jesus if you want to head in a new direction. So I'm here today to break it off your life because we have been passing stuff down to our children over generations. Grandma, they don't pass it down to you and you pass it down to your children and now they pass it, but I bind it in the name of Jesus that God is breaking that struggle off of your life, off of your family. I decree and declare that it's done in the name of Jesus. <coughs> so, what you have to understand and be keenly aware of is that when you do not break the cycles. We got to talk about that. All right. When you decide to let it go on, when you decide to let the cycles continue without anybody saying anything or taking any points of execution, everybody else thinks it's okay to wander in the wilderness. And they think it's okay because you kept doing it and nobody ever decided to break it in your family. But I need somebody to, to decree and declare that I'm going to be the one to break it in my family. That if nobody else does it, I'm tired of seeing the struggle of addictions in my family. I'm tired of seeing them go through the same struggles I've seen grandma and them do. But I'm going to be the one that God uses as a vessel. That the oil, that the anointing that's on my life is going to flow down to my children, and it's going to reach my grandchildren, and it's going to reach my grandchildren's children, and we're going to start a new thing in our lives. <clears throat> so here it is. In order to experience deliverance, in order to spend, experience breakthrough, in order to head in a new direction, there's something that you must do. Not only must you stop a thing, but you also must start a thing. Ooh, let me say that one more time, because uh, if y'all don't get none of this, I need y'all to get this point. Not only do you must stop a thing, but you also must start a thing. Because whenever we're trying to um, experience breakthrough, whenever we're trying to experience deliverance in our family, we're trying to get them to change, we're trying to get them to alter their behavior, many of us, we just think we got to stop things, which is true. There are some things we must stop. We must stop bad practices. We must stop bad habits. We must stop our bad thinking. There are things we must stop. Simultaneously, all at the same time, we must be able to start something else. We must be able to start a new culture. That when you come in my house, we pray before we eat. You must be able to start a prayer, a prayer call. That, that, that if people can't get a breakthrough and a prayer through, they know somebody to call. So there are things you must be able to implement as well as stop in order to experience change and breakthrough in your lives. <clears throat> because we even look at it in the church. All right. That whenever a new church has brings on a new pastor. All right. They have already adopted tradition. They have their old way of thinking, old way of doing things, old way of, of how they structure church, how they do church. But when a new pastor comes in with new vision and new perspective, all right, in order for the church to move forward and head in a new direction, they must stop what they've been doing and start developing a new sound of worship, a new sound of praise, how we give now, how we respond to certain things in the church, developing a new culture. So not only must you stop a thing, but you also must start a thing. All right? In my clothes. Here it is. Tell all my mothers, I'm getting ready to bless you in my clothes. All right? <coughs> when you, all right, have started heading in a new direction. I need y'all to share this. I'm getting ready to preach it. When you make the cognitive decision, okay, all right, Lord, I'm ready. 
I'm ready for real change. I'm ready for God to do something new in my life, in my family, in my career, on my job, all right, and with my children, all right, in my health, in my body, all right. When you start heading in a new direction, all right, which is the right direction, you will be blessed for your obedience. Let me say that one more time because I don't think y'all got it, all right? When you, I'm talking to everybody now, to the whole church, to my men and women, when you finally get it, all right, when you finally get it, and once it finally registers in your psyche, listen to Pastor Ricky, you will prophetically be blessed for your obedience. Here it is. Verse number seven, chapter two, Deuteronomy two and seven. For the Lord your God has blessed you in all that you have done. He has known your wandering through this great wilderness, meaning God saw when you were headed in the wrong direction. He saw all the times when you aborted his plan. He saw all the times when you stopped living to what he called you to do. He saw all the time. He has known your wonder. He has seen when you stop reading your word and, and stop praying. He has seen you wandering in the great woods. These 40 years, the Lord your God has been with you. And I came to encourage somebody today watching me. All right. Watching this broadcast. <laughs> The Lord has been with you. Don't have any mothers who can testify that despite all my opposition, despite the strongholds and struggles and triggers and pains and strains in my life, that the Lord has been with me. And I want to encourage somebody on the day that no matter what you have to go through, one of God, to all my mothers, no matter what you're struggling with you, God has been with you every step of the way. He has been there holding your hand when you could not lift up yourself. God was the one lifting you. He was upholding you with his right hand. The Lord has been there. Here it is. And you have not lacked anything. Although we have seasons of, of, of our struggles and stuff like that. But according to the script of the Israelites, the Lord was telling them, you have not lacked anything. All right. Here it is. In my clothes. I'm getting ready to close for real. All right, so when you head in the right direction, all right, not only has the Lord been with you, not only have you lacked anything, but 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 when you head in the right direction, all right, we have to be able to get to the good stuff. When they did enter into the promised land, the land flowing with milk and honey, according to Deuteronomy 28, he says, and it shall come to pass if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. To observe and to do all his commandments, which I command to you this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee high above all the nations of the earth. So can I go ahead and prophesy to all my mothers and fathers watching me right now is, and talk about the blessings of your obedience? Yes, I know we all went our, 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 our own direction, but when you decide to head in the new direction, According to the scripture, and it says in verse number two, Deuteronomy 2, Deuteronomy 2, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you because you obey the voice of the Lord. And can I prophesy that you shall be blessed in the city? You shall be blessed in the field. You shall be blessed in the country. God is going to give you the influence in your family that at first they didn't have anybody to listen to, but God's going to see fit that they that He anoints you and appoints you to be the influencer, the influencer of your family, because the anointing of God is on your life. <clears throat> so as I close, the word of the Lord says, Blessed shall you be when you come in and when you go. The Lord will command the blessing to be in your storehouse and set all what you set upon your hand. And mothers, I want you all to remember that the Lord prophetically give, gave us the word for 2021 that this is the year of more than enough. That when you decide to head in a new direction for your life and to all my people, general people who've been heading in the wrong direction, God is going to give you more than enough. He's going to give you more than enough love more than enough assurance, more than enough peace, more than enough provision. God hasn't forgotten about you if you head in a new direction. So for those of us who've been heading in the wrong direction, you have to make a decision today. Now understand that I am now delayed when I 
do not honor God and his word. That, that when we operate with disobedience, things, plans begin to fail. Things just don't work out. But I've decided to look at the life of the Israelites. How they decided to obey the voice of the Lord. And God began to turn things around for them. God began to make ways. He began to give them provision. All because they decided to head in a new direction. I want to challenge your faith. That whatever generational struggles we've been passing down. That as of today. We're breaking that generational thing off our minds, off our family minds. And God is making alterations right now in the way we do things, in the way we perceive things. That is breaking. That was our message on last Sunday that it's, it's about to break. And I feel, I sense that things are breaking. The spirit of poverty, the spirit of sickness, the spirit of infirmities, it is breaking off your family. Some of us, we got sickness in our families, diabetes and cancer. I bind it in the name of Jesus. Just because mom and dad didn't have it don't mean you got to have it. That when you head in a new direction, God can start and he, begin, he can begin to cultivate healing in your family. He, he can begin cultivating deliverance and breakthrough. He, begin, he, be, he can begin making alterations even in your family's heart. That at first they believed in God, they strayed away. But if you become the prayer warrior and the chief intercessor of your family, as God begins to give you leadership of your family, God can make these alterations and he can break the cycles of addiction. He can turn your children and grandchildren's lives around all because you decided to be the one to break the cycle, to break the struggle. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, we tell you thank you for your word. Lord, that you're changing us right now in this moment. You're changing the way we think. You're changing the way that we do business. You're changing the way, Lord, that we perceive and receive things in our hearts. God, we thank you, Lord, that as a result of this message, God, we're going to respond in obedience. God, we repent right now that we've been going in cycles. We've held on to those addictions. We've held on to those strongholds. And Lord, you're calling us, God, to walk into the promised land. A land, a God of peace. A land, God, Lord, where we'll begin to meet our future spouses. God, we acknowledge and admit we've been the ones holding up our progression. We've been the ones delaying our destiny. But God, as on today, God, we repent and we get it right. And we head in your direction. So God, we ask you, God, to order our steps, lead us, guide us, direct us for the steps of a good man or a good woman, gender neutral, is ordered by the Lord. So God, order our steps. Show us what to do. Show us what to cut off. God, show us, God, what activities we need to cease and dismiss and dismantle in our lives. God, we're ready, God, to receive your manifestation. God, we're ready, God, to step into our promised land. So, God, by faith, our faith is in agreement with you. God, we're holding on to your word. We're holding on to your promise. God, we're, we're believing you, God, for total breakthrough and deliverance in our lives. God, we give you praise. We give you glory. That it's already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Look, AOP, I love you. Look, I want you all to sow a seed into this word. As you begin to sow, you can sow uh, arenapraise.com. Uh, you can sow on cash out, dollar sign, arena praise. You can give by Venmo. Look for arena praise. Uh, all the information is in the description. So uh, to all our new people, you were blessed and touched by this Mother's Day word about heading in a new direction. I want you to take the opportunity to sow into good ground. Uh, God is putting us in a position right there. We have good soil here at the Ring of Praise. Uh, so I want you to all get that seed in your hand and begin to sow. As you begin sowing, to those of you all who want to rededicate your life back to God, you want to recommit your life back to Christ, you can message me or just repeat this general prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm sorry. I repent of my sins. 
God, I ask you, God, to wash me and make me over again. Lord, I thank you and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that God raised Jesus from the dead. And as of right now, I am saved. I am saved. If you repeated that prayer, if you believe that Jesus is Lord, and, and you were really believe it in your heart, authentically and genuinely, that God raised Jesus from the dead. Child of God, look, I got good news for you. Welcome into the kingdom of God. You have secured your spot in heaven. So welcome. Thank you all for saying that general prayer. I'm excited what God is getting ready to do. AOP, thank you all for being online, being attentive and responsive and uh, your participation, giving me hearts and lights in the comments. God bless you. Appreciate you. All right. Look, once again, I want y'all to sow a seed. Y'all know uh, when I stepped into pastor, I told God I would never try to persuade you all. I would never try to manipulate you all to give him. But those of you know, all right, when you sow into the ring of praise, God, he blesses your life. He's, he opens up doors. He makes ways in your business. He blesses your children to get houses and land and scholarships to school. All right, God is just so awesome. He's so kind to us. So thank y'all so much. I'm getting ready to head down to Greater Community, all right, to my home church and be with the sons of God. I love you. I'm praying for you. I'll see y'all this Wednesday for Bible study and next Sunday for the Word. I love you. God bless you.